Congratulations on your purchase of the Videonix TitleMaker 2000. And welcome to high quality color video title creation for your video productions, live presentations, and other applications where professional level character generation can bring exciting and informative messages to your viewing audience. The Videonix TM2000 Title Maker can either be used to superimpose titles over video from virtually any source by way of composite or YC connections, or it can be used by itself to deliver information backed by the Title Maker's almost infinite variety of built in background patterns, designs, and colors. There are 23 basic fonts available in four different sizes, not to mention the wide variety of special characters that can be added for really spicing up your video productions or presentations. Each font can be bolded, stretched, compressed, and outlined with borders or drop shadows. An automatic text justification can be done to the left, the right, or centered. Some title generators may give you four or five colors to work with. However, the Title Maker 2000 literally has over a million colors that you can apply to your letter colors, your backgrounds, your letter outlines, and even special borders that can be placed above, below, and around your titles. And the Title Maker 2000 just doesn't make the titles, it delivers them onto and off of your TV screen through special effect transitions such as fade or dissolve, scroll, crawl, and 18 other different white patterns. And all of these effects can take place through eight different transition speeds. The Videonix Title Maker 2000 provides the ultimate in user creativity through its sophisticated title editing system. Twelve separate menu screens provide the basis for creating your letters, outlines, borders, backgrounds, and special effect transitions. These editing menus can either appear on your main TV screen or on a separate preview monitor so that your title creation can take place offline. Since the Title Maker 2000 can hold over 8,000 characters in its memory, you can even complete completely discrete collections of title pages for all of the separate projects that you might be working on. Other title editing functions within the Title Maker 2000 include the ability to copy or move either single words or entire title pages. Facilities for changing existing fonts or colors to another on a line-by-line -line basis or anything within a marked bracket area. The capability of setting each title page up for either manual or automatic display with pre-designated durations. And provisions for after-the-fact positioning of the entire title page to left, right, top, or bottom. The videotape that you're watching right now was produced exclusively with the Videonix Title Maker 2000. And its purpose is to present you with all of the necessary information to achieve the most out of your unit. And by the way, if you are using this video for use with your Videonix TM1 Title Maker, you will find that all of the following information with a few exceptions can be applied to that unit as well. So join us now as we show you how to give your video productions and live presentations new character on the video tour of the Videonix TM2000 Title Maker. Since you are probably anxious to get started with your title maker, let's help you get it connected into your system and show you some of its basic operating functions and features. Begin by connecting its power supply into a nearby AC outlet and plugging the other end into the title maker's power receptacle. Connect either the RCA style composite video output jack or the S video YC jack to the respective input jack on a TV monitor or a VCR that is connected to a television set. You don't have to do this at this time, but if you want to see what your titles will look like superimposed over video, you may connect a video source such as a camcorder or another VCR to one of the two video input jacks on the rear of the title maker. Just make sure that you use exclusively either the RCA input and output or the YC input and output. You cannot mix the composite video signals with the YC signals. You may now turn on the power to your VCRs, camcorders, TV monitor, and title maker. And if you are providing a video input source, you may begin playing the tape in that unit. When the title maker first comes on, you'll see a display screen that looks like this, which will be absent of any actual titles if you haven't used your title maker before. Or it may display a title page that has been previously created. If this is the first time you have seen a Videonix title maker, you might want to let it show you what it can do by playing its built-in demo mode. This is done by pressing the key marked Demo to the right of the power key. As you can see, the Videonix Title Maker 2000 can perform virtually any titling task that you ask of it. It's a good idea to take the time to watch this demo in its entirety. It is full of creative ideas that you can easily employ in your own title creation. 
To stop the demo mode, simply press any key on the TitleMaker's keyboard, which will return you to the editing screen. The TitleMaker 2000 has two primary display screens. The editing screen, where you create the actual titles and transitions, and the play screen where the results of your editing takes place on your video production or your main presentation monitor. To get to the play screen from the edit screen, just press the play key. To get back to the edit screen, merely press the new line OK key. On the edit screen, you'll see a flashing cursor that shows you where a letter will appear if you type one. When the title maker is in the edit screen mode, the positioning of the text on the screen may not be exactly what you get when you enter the play mode. This is due to the fact that the edit screen is a continuously scrolling series of text that will move about the screen while you are creating titles. Moving the cursor while in the edit screen mode will not affect the actual title's position on the screen. To see that, you must enter the play mode. As you have probably noticed, the regular letter keys share their functions with a variety of special characters such as trademark, or copyright. To obtain these characters, hold down the accent key while pressing any of the respective dual purpose letter keys. If you make a mistake, you can go back to correct it by pressing the delete key, which also acts as a backspace key. By the way, if you accidentally delete something, you can recall it if you press the undo key immediately. When you have completed a line of text, you may go on to the next line down by pressing the new line OK key which of course will take the cursor down to the next line. The arrow key on the right side of the keyboard controls the cursor location when the title maker is in the edit screen mode and it selects the desired item of choice when in one of the menu screens. Pressing the up and down arrow key will move the cursor one line at a time. If you hold down the shift key while pressing the up and down arrow, the cursor will advance an entire page at a time. The shift key combined with left or right arrow movements will take you to either the beginning or end of whatever line that you happen to be on at the time. Inserting new text into existing text merely requires that the cursor be placed where the new text is desired and then type in your inserted letters or words. Once a title page has been completed, you may move on to another title page within the edit screen by pressing the next page key or just press the play key to see what it looks like on your TV screen. Now that you have created several pages of titles, you may go back and alter the parameters of the existing titles such as the font style or letter color. These changes are made through the various menus that can be accessed from the keys across the top of the title maker's keyboard. For instance, let's say that you want to change the first line of your first title page to a script style of font. First place the cursor on the line of text that you wish to change and then press the font and size key in the font menu section. You'll see this screen up here where the current style of font is indicated by the double black bars. To change the current font style to another, use the up and down arrow key to scroll through the 23 different font styles until you find the one that you wish to use. Now, when you press either the space bar or the new line OK key, you'll return to your edit screen with that new font style replacing the previous one. Let's say that you wish to change the color of the letters on the second line of your second page of titles. Once again, move the cursor to that particular line and press the color key in the letter menu section. Here again, you may use the up and down arrow key to scroll through the many available colors. Once that color is selected, press the space bar or new line OK key to return to the edit screen. By the way, you may go from any of the menu screens to the play screen just by pressing the play key. You may have noticed that on each menu screen, there are several submenus with the respective active submenu being highlighted. Typically, the second or third submenu on each menu screen will permit you to perform variations on whatever task is at hand. For instance, let's say that you wish to compress the lettering on one line of characters to make room for more letters. In the font style menu, there are three submenus, the top one being for the addition of letter outlines and shadows, the middle one for expanding or compressing letters on a given line, and the bottom submenu for making the given line of letters bolder or thicker. After deciding which line on your edit screen that you wish to compress, go to the font style menu screen and use either the mark start, the mark end, or the tab key to toggle through the various submenus. 
Once that submenu is highlighted, then use the up and down arrow key to select how much or how little spacing that you want between your letters. This entire procedure that we have been using up to now has involved the placing of titles over a solid background. But what if you wish to superimpose titles over a video picture? Simple. Just place the cursor anywhere on the title page that you would like to be superimposed over video and then press the pattern key in the background menu. You will see four boxes across the top of the upper submenu. The first being for the selection of a solid background color created by the title maker. The second is for a textured background. The third is a multicolored or rainbow background. And the fourth box that is labeled video opens up the internal backgrounds of the title maker and permits the video signal connected to the video input jacks to pass through. In essence, your video signal is now the background pattern, onto which will go any titles that you have created. Let's create a title for our video story. First, we'll go to the edit screen and type in the title of our story. Now we can go to the font and size menu and change the font if we like. To provide some separation between the titles and our background video picture, We'll go to the font style menu and add drop shadows to our lettering. Since our video picture is pretty bright, we might want to change the color of our lettering so that we have a more distinct contrast. We'll do that in the letter color menu. Let's see what that looks like by pressing the play key. Hmm, wouldn't it be nice if we could just move the entire set of titles over to one side of the screen so that it will fit better with our video picture? Hey, I bet that's what the little position key is for. We'll just go back to the edit screen, place the cursor on the line that we want to move over to the side of the screen, press the position key once, and then press the arrow key in the direction that we want to move the title. We'll do that for each line that we want to move and press the play key to see how it all looks. Ah, much better. You know what seems like in the movies when a title comes on the screen over video? It doesn't just jump on the screen. It sort of fades on and fades off. Maybe that's where the effects menu comes in. To create a title on or title off transition, you'll have to provide a blank title page for the titles to come from and another blank title page for the titles to go to. This is done in the edit screen by placing the cursor at the very beginning of your existing title and pressing the new page key. This inserts a new page just ahead of your title page and of course there is nothing on this page. So we'll just leave it that way and call it our lead-in page. Now we'll take the cursor down to the end of our existing title page and press New Page again. Now we have a blank page that will follow the sequence of our lettered title page. We can call this our exit page. Before we see what transitions are available in the effects menu, we'll first return the cursor to the title page that will be affected by the transition. And then we'll press the effects end menu key. Here we see 24 different ways of bringing our titles onto the screen. If you select the icon with the scissors, you'll get a straight cut or instant jump onto the title page. However, if you select the dissolve icon, then your title will softly fade onto the screen. So let's select that as our in effect. While we're at it, let's also go to the effects out menu and choose a means for the title leaving the screen. This curtain closing type of wipe should look nice. Press the spacebar or the New Line OK key to get us back to the edit screen. Now, wherever the cursor happens to be when we press the play key, that is where our titling will begin. Since we don't want to immediately go to the title until we've played a bit of our video first, we'll move the cursor back to the blank lead-in page. Let's push the play key to display the blank title page and begin rolling our video footage. Ooh, that looks like fun. Let's bring in a title and tell everyone what it's all about. We'll do that by pressing the play key again. Remember, every time you press the play key, the next title page in sequence will appear, even if it's a blank page. Now, that was a great video story. Let's wrap it up and give credit where credit is due. We'll get into more detail of all of these functions later in this video. As mentioned before, using the Videonics Title Maker 2000 can be as simple as connecting it to a TV monitor and playing your titles, or its use can be as complex as the video editing system that you have connected it into. 
However, even in its simplest form, the title maker must be connected from its video output to what is called a line level video input such as the RCA or S video jacks on a TV set or your VCR. Even with the use of plug adapters such as this, you cannot connect the title maker's output to the antenna cable TV input of a television set. It has to be this type of video input on a TV set. If your television doesn't have this type of input, then you can plug your title maker into a VCR's line level input jack and watch your titles displayed on the TV set to which the VCR is connected. It should be noted that on many VCRs, you must select the line in or auxiliary in in order to activate this RCA or S video input jack. This is accomplished with either a selector switch on the VCR or remote control or through the on-screen menu mode of the VCR itself. Or if you want, you can purchase a device from your local electronics store called an RF modulator, which will electronically convert the title maker's line level output to the antenna cable input on your television set. These devices cost about $30. The output jack on the title maker labeled Preview may be connected to a separate TV monitor provided it too has provisions for a line level video input. Though this connection isn't necessary for the basic operation of the Title Maker 2000, it will allow you to perform your title editing so that the edit screen will not be displayed on your primary TV monitor. If you connect a video source to the Title Maker so that titles can be superimposed over it, make this connection so that it is consistent with whatever type of video signal that is coming out of the Title Maker. If your video input source is the RCA style composite connection, then your Title Maker's video output must also be RCA composite. The same holds true with S-Video or YC inputs and outputs. In either case, make sure that you use quality video cables for the best results in both your title maker's operation and the quality of your video editing production. The title maker is also supplied with audio in and audio out jacks, which are provided for convenience when using combination audio video dub cables. The title maker itself does not process the audio signals in any way. It only passes it right through, and if you like, you may bypass these connections altogether. <music> Nothing adds that professional look to your video footage like high-quality title generation. And if one of your favorite pastimes is video editing, then the Videonics Title Maker 2000 will be right at home in your editing system. Even though there is no specific way to incorporate the Title Maker into your system, there is one basic rule of thumb when chaining together multiple pieces of video equipment. The video output from one device is always connected to the video input of another. Perhaps the simplest way to integrate your Title Maker into your editing setup is by placing it in between the video output of your source video device, like your camcorder or playback VCR, and the video input of your recording or editing VCR. This way, as you copy the video signal from, let's say, your camcorder, as it is in the playback mode, that video signal can pass through the title maker where titles can be superimposed over the video signal before it passes on to the editing VCR to be recorded. Other video processing devices can also be introduced into the video signal chain, such as the Videonics MX1 Digital Video Mixer, the popular special effects generator that can add over 200 different video effects and transitions to your video source footage. There are several ways that you can connect the title maker to the MX1. The most versatile of which is placing the title maker after the digital mixer so that everything that goes in and out of the MX1 can have titles added to it. Another connection scheme might be treating the title maker as if it were a video source itself. In this case, the output of the title maker is connected directly to one of the four inputs on the MX1 digital mixer. This way, special effect transitions can take place between your titles and your source video footage. And yet another way of incorporating your title maker and your MX1 digital mixer is to come out of your source video device into and through the title maker and then onto one of the video inputs of the MX1. This way, if you are mixing together multiple video sources through your MX1, you can selectively have titles added to only one video source and not the other. On the rear of the title maker is an input jack labeled GPI control. Into this jack, you can plug a special cable that is connected at the other end to an edit controller that will send the title maker a remote control signal to activate its play mode. 
This is a handy feature to use in the event that you want to automatically trigger the title pages in the Title Maker at pre-designated edit points that you have defined in your edit controller. As mentioned earlier, the Title Maker 2000 has a built-in demo mode that illustrates its titling and special effects capabilities. In addition to the standard demo mode, there is also an alternate demo mode that shows off many of the special characters and international text. You can view this demo mode by pressing the demo key while holding down the shift key. If you want to see exactly what the Title Maker is doing while it's in the demo mode, then simultaneously press the command the shift and the copy keys. This will load the entire demo sequence into the edit screen so that you can study each and every effect in title. As a matter of fact, you can use this demo mode as the basis for your own titles just by replacing the Videonics titles with your own. Remember, anything that's on the edit screen can be changed. When you first enter the edit screen, you'll see a number of symbols across the top of each title page. The first symbol indicates which project that you're on. Provided that you have the internal memory available, you can create as many different projects as you need. We'll look at project creation in more detail later in this video. The second symbol at the top of the page shows the vertical position of the text on the screen, either up or down. The third symbol is the actual page number of the respective project that you are working within. The fourth symbol shows you what type of effect or transition that will get you into this title page when coming from the previous one. Here the symbol indicates a straight cut. In other words, when this title page comes up for play, it will instantly display its text rather than fading or wiping into it. The numerical symbol indicates the time duration that this title page will stay on the screen before it will automatically move on to the next. In the Effects in menu, you can select between a time duration shown in minutes, seconds, and tenths of a second, Infinity, which means the title page remains on the screen until you manually press the play key to move on to the next title page, and your choice of either scroll or crawl, where the titles on that page roll up or crawl across the screen. And the last symbol at the top of the title page is the indication of how this title page will leave the screen. This is the Effects Out, and here we see an upper left corner wipe. You'll find that one of the more frequently used keys on the title maker when you're in the edit screen mode is the arrow key. This is the key that would take the cursor to anywhere in the edit mode where a title has been previously created. In addition to its up and down and left and right movement within a given title page, its use in conjunction with the shift key will permit you to jump to the next or previous page, or jump to the beginning or end of whichever line that you're on. When the arrow key is used with the command key, the cursor can jump directly to the top of the very first page of text or to the bottom of the very last page. Any combination pressing of command, shift, and the arrow key will take you instantly from one project to another. A chart showing these commands is on page 26 of your instruction manual. As mentioned earlier, the new line OK key adds a new line onto which you may add new text. You may also use this to place vertical spaces between your existing lines of text. The delete key backs up the cursor, and if there is a letter there, it will erase it. The delete key will also remove a blank line, and if you like, you can use it to move text from one line to the line above it by placing the cursor right at the beginning of the line and pressing delete. The shift key not only capitalizes lowercase letters, but it also allows access to the alternate symbols above the number keys. The tab key creates columns that automatically align themselves with the spacing of the line above them. After creating a primary heading and going down to a new line, use the tab key between each word to align it with the heading above. And if the alternate characters displayed in yellow on the primary letter keys are to your liking, you may call them up by pressing the respective letter key along with the accent key. A complete list of special characters is shown on pages 28, 29, and 82 of your instruction manual, along with a formula for creating accented letters to be used for foreign language titles. Music 
A page on the Videonix TitleMaker 2000 can consist of a single character or numerous lines consisting up to a thousand characters per line. You may not be able to see all 1,000 characters at the same time, but they are there if you set up the page with a crawl transition. If for some reason you attempt to play a scrolling page with 40 to 60 lines or more, you may get this warning, which means that you'll have to trim down the number of lines or perhaps change the font style or size as to not consume as much internal memory within the title maker. By the way, you can check the current memory status of the title maker by pressing the command key and the letter M at the same time. A four-digit number will let you know how close you are to the title maker's 8,000 plus character capacity. Since the title maker 2000 has the ability to file title pages into different projects, you can look up a specific title page on the page index screen by pressing the page index key. Instantly you will see a listing of all projects which are labeled within the brackets and every title page within that project. You may go directly to any of these title pages just by pressing the up and down arrow key to scroll through the listings. Once there, you can press New Line OK to call up that title page to the edit screen, or you can press the play key to put that title into the display mode. There are two keys above the arrow key labeled Mark Start and Mark End. Even though these keys can be used to toggle through the various submenu screens, their primary purpose is to mark or highlight groups of characters on the edit screen that need to be altered, moved, copied, or deleted as a batch. For instance, let's say that you have created five pages of titles with three or four lines of text each, and you now want to change the color of these letters from white to yellow. You could go through each page one line at a time and change the color, or you could place a bracket at the beginning of the first line by pressing the Mark Start key and place another bracket at the end of the last line by pressing the Mark End key. Now any task that you perform will affect everything within those brackets, including the changing of the letter color, or the changing of the font style, or the copying or moving of this entire text to another location. The marked text will go to wherever the cursor is when either the Copy or Move key is pressed and if you desire, their total elimination by pressing delete. Remember, if you press the undo key immediately, you can restore what you may have accidentally deleted. A project is basically a collection of title pages. You might even think of each project as a separate file folder in a file cabinet drawer and within each file folder is a batch of pages. When you have several different video production tasks going on at the same time, you can store each task's respective title pages in its own file folder or project. This way you won't accidentally put the wrong titles on the wrong production. Could be embarrassing. What if you're using the Videonics TitleMaker 2000 to create titles for last summer's vacation footage, a seminar that you videotaped last month, and a wedding that you shot last weekend. And being the resourceful video editor that you are, you're trying to get all three jobs edited by tomorrow. Rather than starting over again on the title maker for each editing job, why not just categorize the summer vacations title into one project, the seminars titles into another project, and John and Mary's wedding titles into a third project. First, let's call up the page index screen. If this is our very first project, we'll see this display. The empty brackets are for us to name this project for reference purposes. If we already have a first project and we want to create another, we'll press the command and new page keys at the same time and a new set of brackets accompanying the new project will appear. And of course we can add a third project in the same manner. Now we can name our projects and use the cursor to take us from one project to another. Once there, we can press the New Line OK key to get us into the edit screen for that particular project and begin our actual creation of our titles. Now we can keep our titles where they belong, and even after turning off the power on the title maker, we can come back later, turn on the title maker, and resume where we left off on our editing jobs.
Once you have created the titles, you might want to go back and make some changes, like spelling corrections, font and style alterations, line insertion, or moving or copying text to another location. Individual letter removal is done by placing the cursor after the desired letter and then pressing delete. Individual letter insertion is accomplished by placing the cursor where you want the new letter to be located and then just type that letter in. Text fonts, styles, colors, patterns, outlines, and borders can be changed by placing the cursor on the respective line of characters and then going to the respective menu to modify its status. It should be noted that you can only make changes on a line or marked bracket basis. You cannot change the parameters of individual letters within a line. The moving or copying of titles is as simple as marking the text beginning and end and then placing the cursor where you want the marked text to go. By repeatedly pressing the copy key, the copied text will multiply itself indefinitely. The Title Maker's Position key allows you to select between the automatic centering of all typed text or the positioning of the text to the left or right of the screen. And when the text is created, the Position key can display the titles in the center of the screen, the top of the screen, or the bottom of the screen. For instance, to obtain a left side text justification, press the Position key and then press the left arrow key. You will see the cursor align itself with the left side of the screen and all subsequent letters will line up to the left side of the title page. And if you already have text created, you can place the cursor on the desired line and move it elsewhere by pressing the position key followed by the arrow key. Precise horizontal location of the text can be achieved by placing spaces to the front of each line and vertical fine tuning can be accomplished with the addition or deletion of blank lines. Overall vertical positioning of the entire text page can take place by pressing the position key and then pressing the up or down arrow key. You won't see any text movement while in the edit screen mode, however the position icon will show you whether or not vertical positioning has been made. And you will see the vertical positioning when you enter the play mode. Once again the insertion of lines within the text page will set up the title's precise location. The 12 center keys across the top of the Videonix Title Maker 2000 are the menu keys, which when pressed will take you to a variety of menu screens that provide options in setting up or changing your titles, borders, backgrounds, and effects. You may enter any of the menu screens from either the edit screen or the play screen mode. Once there, you may select between two or more submenus with the mark start, mark end, or tab keys and the actual parameter to be changed is selected with the arrow key which will scroll you through all of the available fonts the different colors the letter outline and background patterns the border styles and the variety of effects that can be used as transitions why don't we create a title sequence in which we can use all of the different menus on the title maker 2000 now we don't have to use every menu screen for each title creation as a matter of fact, if the current or previous menu setup is already what you want, then just continue to use it. However, for this demonstration, we'll begin working left to right with the various menus. Before we get into the first menu, let's look at how each menu change can affect the entire text on a title page. First of all, any changes to the background, pattern, or effects menus will affect the entire title page, not just the individual line of titles. Border and background color changes also affect the entire page. And any changes that you make to a line affects that whole line, not just the individual letter. Any text within the mark brackets will be affected by every menu change that you make. And when you are creating your titles, you may use the menus to set up the various characteristics before you type in your actual letters. That way, those characteristics will remain constant throughout your title creation until you change them. Or you can type your text first and go back and change, let's say, the letter color on a line-by-line -line basis.
The font and size menu gives you the choice of 23 different types of text that we can scroll through with our arrow key. You might notice that some of the available fonts are uppercase only, which means that the shift key and caps lock key will have no effect on these letters. So let's pick a font. The other submenu on the screen is the font size, which we can get to by pressing one of the mark keys or the tab key. The TitleMaker 2000 defaults to the normal size, but if we want to increase its font size, we can use the arrow key to select a larger size which is twice as wide, twice as high, or twice as high and wide. For the smoothest looking letters, you may want to leave the fonts in their normal size since size doubling makes them look more jagged. Here's what the same font looks like in four different sizes. A few tips on font selection. Keep your variety of your fonts to only one or two different types per title page. Too many different fonts will make your title look cluttered. And use a large size of font that will grab the viewer's attention, such as the title of your program. Or use a smaller font when less significant information is being displayed. The second menu on the TitleMaker 2000 is the Font Style menu. Here, three different submenus allow you to select letter outlines, drop shadows, or no outline at all. The middle submenu sets up the spacing between letters from full width to a compressed width that permits more letters to be placed on the same line. And the bottom submenu adds two levels of letter bolding to the normal style so that your titles will stand out more especially when superimposed over a video background. A quick tip for making your titles even bolder is to add a letter outline that is of the same color as the letter itself thus making the letter appear that much thicker looking. Since the Videonix TitleMaker 2000 has over a million colors available, why not use at least some of them to give your titles a bright colorful look? The different colors can be independently changed on the actual letter, the letter outline, the borders, and the backgrounds. Each of these four menus allow you to go in and pick whatever color you like. For instance, let's change the color of our letter from white to let's say orange. Hmm, maybe this isn't the exact shade of orange that we were thinking about. No problem. The other submenu on these color menu screens let you fine-tune the color by changing the hue or tint of the color by moving the pointer across the control bar with the arrow key. If you want to move faster, hold down the shift key while pressing the arrow key. Hold down the command key and the pointer will jump from one end of the control bar to the other. The middle control bar changes the color saturation or intensity. And the bottom control bar lightens or darkens the color. At this point, we have literally created a brand new color. What's nice is that we can add it to the existing palette of colors by pressing the new line OK key. Now our new custom color will show up when we scroll through the colors, and it will be the short one in length across the screen. To instantly access these custom colors, just press the arrow key while holding down the command key. While we're in the color changing mood, let's also go and pick a letter outline color from the outline color menu screen. The very same procedure for selecting a color is also accomplished here. And while we're at it, let's change the background color in the background color menu. A word of advice, be careful when using really hot colors like bright red or purple. They have a tendency to smear when recorded onto videotape. And watch out for background colors and patterns that appear noisy when displayed on a television screen. You will see that there is a pattern menu for the letters, the outlines, and the backgrounds. Let's change the pattern of our letters. On this menu screen we see four little boxes across the top with an indicator bar that can be moved with the arrow key. If we select the first box, then the pattern of our letter will be a solid color. If we select the second box, then our letter color will take on a textured pattern look. And you see that a new submenu has popped up. By jumping down to this submenu, we can actually change the design of our textured pattern with the arrow key, scrolling through 16 different pattern background textures, including static patterns, grid patterns, and even star field patterns. 
we'll go back up to the top submenu and move our selector bar over to the third box. Wow, look at all those multicolored rainbows. And here too we have a submenu to pick from between 16 different types of rainbow colors. How about this one? Now if we wanted to, we could have also selected the fourth box on the top submenu, which is labeled Video. If we were superimposing our titles over video, this selection would have made our letters look totally transparent, and we wouldn't even see them unless we had an outline around the letter. So now that the pattern for our letter is selected, let's go back and pick the desired pattern for our letter outline, which is done the exact same way as a pattern for the letter itself. On the background pattern menu, we can once again choose either a solid, textured, rainbow, or video background. However, this time there's another submenu that pops up when we select either one of the first three boxes. This is a video mix submenu that lets us create a transparency between our chosen background and the video signal underneath it. As we begin moving the pointer with the arrow key, we start to see the video show through. This makes for a really nice effect when you want to subdue the video into the background so that the titles up front stand out with more distinction. Now our letters, colors, backgrounds, and patterns have been selected. How about adding a little emphasis to one of our title lines with a colored border? I'm sure that you've seen these borders used on television to add kind of a graphic element to the title screen. First we'll select what color we want the border to be. How about this? Now we'll go over to the border style menu and pick maybe a textured pattern for the border like this one. Now we have to decide how we want the border to relate to our lettering. This submenu lets us select between a border that underlines our title, a border that sits above our title, vertical borders that look like bookends, or a box border that encompasses the entire title. For placing the box style border around several lines of text, we'll go back to the edit screen and mark the beginning and end of the desired lines of text. Then we'll return to the border style menu and select the box style border. To remove a border from your title, place the cursor on that line and go to the border style menu. Once there, use the arrow key to go over to one of the border styles and then back again to no border at all. Let's see what we've got so far. A classy looking font in a nice color with a colored outline sitting atop a textured background with a border separating two of our lines of titles. Now how do we get it to elegantly come on the screen? That's where the effects menu comes in. For bringing the title page on the screen, we'll go to the effects in menu. Here we'll pick a curtain type wipe to open the title. We'll set the speed of the wipe on this sub menu. How about a nice slow number two? Do we want to set a title page duration time? No, we'll just put it on infinity so that we can play it by ear as to how long the title page displays itself. Now we need to get the title page off the screen, so we'll go to the Effects Out menu. Here we'll have the entire title page slide off the screen to the right. And we'll make this happen rather quickly by setting the wipe speed at number 7. Now, did we remember to put in a lead-in page before our title page and another blank exit page after it? Let's check. Aha, we didn't. So let's do that now by placing the cursor at the very beginning of the title page and press the new page key. And we'll move the cursor to the end of our title page and press the new page key again. Want to see what our title sequence looks like? Let's move the cursor to where we want the sequence to start when we press the play key. Now when we press play, the lead-in blank screen will come on first. With the second pressing of the play key, we will see our gorgeous title page. Boy, that looks nice. And one more pressing of the play key will send our title right off the screen. Hey, I'm impressed. In addition to the cut, dissolve, and wipe transitions, you can also create a title page that can be scrolled or crawled across the screen. This always looks nice when it's time to roll the closing credits. Just make sure that you stay within the title maker's 40 to 60 line memory capability for scrolling. 
However, crawling can go on almost forever. On our last title creation, we place the text over the title maker's built-in backgrounds. If you want to use your video footage as a background to the titles, just place the cursor on the page that you want video to show through on and go to the background pattern menu. Use the arrow key to walk the selector bar over to video and press the new line OK key. Provided that you have video playing through the title maker, you should now see it under the titles. And if you have a blank lead-in page and a blank exit page that follows your title page, go and assign video as the background for those as well. Again, we'll place our cursor on the lead-in page and press the play key. And with the next pressing of the play key, here comes our title page. Once more on the play key, and our title leaves the screen. Hey, want to try something kind of fancy? Let's go back to the edit screen and insert another blank page before our titles and an additional one after them. On the very first blank page, we'll change the background pattern from video to a built-in background. Now on the Effects Out menu, we'll select a white pattern like this one. Let's return to the edit screen and walk our cursor down to the second blank page past our titles and we'll also change its background from video to one of the built-in patterns. In its Effects In menu, we'll call up a wipe like this one. Back to the edit screen where we take the cursor to the very first page and start pressing the play key. This is what our title sequence looks like now. A wipe from a background pattern to live video. Then our titles come on. Then our titles go off while the video plays for a while. And finally, our video disappears via a white pattern back to the built-in background. Take the time to play with these different combinations of backgrounds and videos and transitions and titles. You'll be surprised what you'll come up with. There are a number of ways to play your titles, the simplest of which is just pressing the play key. And wherever the cursor happens to be in the edit screen mode, that's where your titles will start playing. If you have created several title projects, you can switch over to a different project by pressing the up and down arrow key while simultaneously holding down the command and shift keys. Then press the play key. The easiest way to play all the pages within a project is to just press the command and play key at the same time, which will automatically begin playing page one first. To play a specific group of pages, mark the first page in the sequence and the last page in the sequence. Now when you press play, these pages will automatically play themselves continually provided they have duration settings. To play a sequence of pages in reverse order, hold down the shift key each time you press the play key and any time a sequence of title pages are playing, you can put them in the pause mode just by tapping one of the space bars. By the way, the space bar will also halt the scrolling or crawling of a title across the screen. Tapping the space bar once again will resume the scroll or crawl. Also, if you have duration set for each of your title pages, you can force this automatic sequence into a manual mode by pressing the right arrow key once the titles have begun. Each successive pressing of the right arrow key will manually take you to the next page. The left arrow key, of course, will manually take you backwards through the page sequence. And any time the title maker is playing, you may instantly leave the play mode and go to the edit screen just by pressing the new line OK key. When using the Videonix Title Maker 2000 with your video editing system, you may take advantage of its titling capabilities to introduce the show, tell the viewers where and when the action is taking place, identify its respective performers, help the viewer understand what is happening, and close the show with scrolling credits. 
The easiest way to incorporate titles into your video production is by creating the titles first before you actually start editing your tape and place a blank title page between all of the title pages. This way your play key is pressed to call up the necessary title in the order that it is needed. And when the title goes off the screen, the next one is in line, ready to go. Or you can trigger the title maker by way of the GPI control input on the back of the unit. This allows your edit controller to automatically engage the play mode when its GPI pulse is sent out to the title maker. On page 74 of your instruction manual is a diagram for wiring a manual GPI control switch, which when activated from a remote location will trigger the play function in the title maker. Many business operators will find the title maker an invaluable tool for advertising at their place of business. With duration settings on each page, the title maker will automatically tell customers about the latest specials and sales that are going on. Teachers and lecturers can use the title maker to enhance their live presentations with supplemental charts, statistics, and figures. And if you're giving a speech, wouldn't it be easier to take your cues off a television prompting system than trying to memorize everything that you have to say? If you have an extra TV monitor that you can connect to the preview output jack on the TitleMaker 2000, you can set that monitor up separately from your main display monitor so that when it comes time to enter the edit screen mode, it will only appear on the preview monitor and not on your display monitor. Here again at your place of business, your customers won't be able to see you changing or editing titles. They'll just see the beautiful end result when you press the play key. At this time, the titles will be displayed on both your preview monitor and your display monitor. By the way, if nothing is connected to the preview output jack, then your edit screen will appear as usual on your main display monitor. There are quite a few functions that the title maker can perform. And every now and then you might need to speed up your title editing process by instantly jumping from one page or project to another. Or you might want to scroll through the different colors in a menu an entire screen at a time. Beginning on page 77 of your instruction manual is a list of various shortcut commands to get you quickly about the title maker and its various functions. For example, you can erase everything within a project by pressing Command and Shift and Delete at the same time. The trash can symbol will appear which will warn you that everything is about to be erased. Press the New Line OK key to confirm that you really want to erase everything. Or press Undo immediately if you do not want to erase the project. If you have loaded the demo mode into the edit screen to analyze the various titles and the effects, a significant portion of the title maker's memory will be occupied. So if you plan to store large quantities of your own work, you may want to delete the transfer demo mode in order to free up memory space. Starting on page 80 is an illustration of all of the fonts and characters that can be accessed from the Title Maker. As you can see, the Videonics Title Maker 2000 is no ordinary title generator. It has the potential of being right at home in your video editing studio as well as your business or classroom. If you think about it, there is virtually no task that the Title Maker 2000 cannot perform. So take the time to experiment with all of its features and controls. And as mentioned before, study the built-in demos for some fantastic ideas on title creation and transitional effects. And thank you for joining us on this video tour of the Videonics Title Maker 2000. Until next time, I'm Steve Bullender.